Hey YouTube, what's up? Vinny here for another edition of Cap of the Week. It's been quite a while since I last did a cap, so appreciate the support from everybody. We'll try a little bit more, harder to do more, more caps of the week. Got plenty of caps to take a look at. And also we'll try to do a little more work on the Steadicam. But without interruption, our cap of the week this week is the St. Louis Browns. Now St. Louis, as we know now today, is a Cardinals town. It's a great baseball town, great fans. They always pack the stadium over there. But from 1902 to 1953, the St. Louis Browns also played in St. Louis, and they were the talk of the town at the turn of the, of the 20th century. Uh, they've had great players such as George Sisler, and later on in his career, Satchel Paige also played there. Now, the St. Louis Browns, unfortunately, most of their time in the American League was spent losing, with the exception of some winning teams in the 20s and they won the pennant in 1944. That was a year where most of the players were already um, serving the country at World War II. And it was an all St. Louis World Series. So it was the Cardinals and the Browns. Now the St. Louis Browns actually owned the park that the Cardinals played in, Sportsman's Park, which uh, was torn down in the mid-60s uh, when they moved to Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis. So it's interesting that St. Louis, the St. Louis Browns actually had a better and firmer foundation for St. Louis baseball, but over time, St. Louis Browns uh, lost out to the Cardinals due to their great farm system of Branch Rickey, who they let go. So the Browns, unfortunately, are steeped in uh, some bad luck and some bad personnel decisions. But let's take a look at the cap. So this cap actually represents the 1950-1951 St. Louis Browns. It's a Roman Pro Cooperstown cap, circa mid-80s, early uh, 90s. So if we can take a look on the inside, it says, after the 1953 season, the financially plagued St. Louis Browns were sold and moved to Baltimore where they became the modern day Orioles. In 1951, Ned Garver accomplished what no other pitcher has done since, pitching for a team that would lose more than 100 games and becoming a 20 game winner. So it's nice to know when your team loses, you know, only has 40, you know, 40 wins or so, you actually win half your team's games. So it's, uh, I think that's something that's not gonna happen again. But uh, it's an interesting one. The Browns, uh, of course, they have brown as their uh, primary color with orange as well. And uh, St. Louis uh, logo is very similar to the St. Louis Cardinals logo. Um, we flip the back and we'll see that there is a leather sweatband uh, for the Roman Pro time, size six and one eight, six and seven eighths. And then also uh, we've got the Roman Pro, Brockton, Massachusetts, and uh, Cooper Sound logo. So the 1950-51 Browns were special because of the owner, and he is probably the most influential owner in baseball in terms of his marketing abilities, his ideas also to break the color line, and also just make baseball fun for families, and that's Bill Veck, as in Rec. And uh, Bill Veck owned the team in the, late, in the late 40s, early 50s, and he did some interesting things, such as signing Satchel Paige, who at the time was in his late 40s, or mid, mid to late 40s to a contract pitch, um, and that would be his final appearance in a major league game. But infamously, in 1951, he signed a four foot, I think maybe he was three foot seven, but his name was Eddie Goodell, who, um, you know, he was pretty short to say the least. And he went up to bat. It was a publicity stunt, but he was in a major league baseball game. He had a number of one eighth on the back of his jersey. And basically there's no strike zone for a guy that small. So he walked on four pitches, never took his hands off, never took his bat off the shoulders and walked to first base. And uh, I think that's when the league had it with Bill Vec and they ended up, eventually ended up selling the park to the Cardinals and then also ended up selling the team to interest who moved the St. Louis Browns in 1954 to Baltimore. So the Baltimore Orioles are today the St. Louis, they are the St. Louis Browns, however, there's really no connection if you look at the Baltimore Orioles history. Uh, they made a big trade right after 54 where they got rid of their most of their St. Louis Browns players. So it's a little sad to see that the you know the Browns don't really have that visceral like history like Dodgers, Giants do in terms of keeping the team name. But they are an important part of baseball. They did win one pennant in 44, which was the old St. Louis World Series. And you know, they were a team that had some good players. Uh, George Sisler, who had a hit record until Ichiro, a single season hits in a season. And, you know, now St. Louis is always known as a one as a one team town. But um, for about half a century, there were two teams in St. Louis. Anyway, this is this week's Cap of the Week. I will see you next week. See ya.